Hello, Katie. Hello, everybody. Hi, Rachel, and hello, everyone. Got a lot of people are joining nice and early. Don't forget to tell us who you are, where you're from in the chat, guys, if you would. Yeah, don't forget to change, if you're going to type a message in the chat to change the drop down to all panellists and attendees, um, then everybody can, can see the message, unless you just want to privately send it to uh, Katie, Mark and I, of course. If you're just joining, please be sure to let us know who you are and where you're joining from. We'd love to learn more about you today. And you'll want to change the setting to all panelists and attendees to be sure that everybody can receive your message in the chat. Wonderful, Kirsten. We will be reviewing uh, its features right at the very beginning today. Hi, Kathleen. Kristen, I saw that you were at a university. Uh, are you doing outreach from the university to schools or to university students? Wonderful. Yeah, there are a lot of neat activities that you'll be able to do um, with your outreach. A lot of quick activities. I don't know how long you'll be with the students. Um, today we'll be looking at some quick activities that you could do in single visits. So if you're comfortable, please share more about your program. If you have any links to the work that you're doing, we would love to learn more about how you're using the micro bits in primary outreach. Yeah, definitely. I'm waiting for a big influx of, of people to join us so we can get started, but we'll, we'll wait till two minutes past the hour to, uh, to start. Are we live streaming to YouTube? We are. Everything's worked successfully this week. That's exciting. <laughs> I'll get better each week. <laughs> so we may have some folks who are tuning in on our Microbit Educational Foundation YouTube channel uh, watching live today. Uh, you won't be able to see the chat box, so Rachel and I will, you know, be sure to respond to the chat box in a clear way so that if you're watching on YouTube, you'll know what we're talking about. <laughs> so happy to have you join us. Thank you for being here. Yeah. I'll let Katie explain it clearly. I'll, I'll just mumble, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true at all. Well, if you do mumble, it'll be because your friend Katie called you in the middle of the night by accident and woke you up. <laughs> don't need to tell everybody else. Okay. I don't want to look too tired. It's fine. <laughs> uh, yes, we had an outage in the U.S. with the T-Mobile service yesterday. And for some reason, it seemed like a good idea to call my friend in the U.K. to test my phone. <laughs> woke yeah. her up. I was sound asleep at 1.30 a.m. Um, <laughs> don't hold any grudges, Katie. It's absolutely fine. 
Hello from Colombia. We are, really are reaching far and wide, aren't we, with, with this webinar. There's people joining us from all over the world. It's exciting. It really is. If you're just joining us, uh, do be sure to tell us who you are and where you're joining from. And if you're comfortable, share a little bit more about what you do. And if you're already working with Microbits, feel free to drop in a link to the programs that you run or the activities that you offer. We would love to learn from you as well. Thank you so much for being here. Katie, I tried making a sock puppet that you showed us last week. Um, I got so far and realized that I don't know if this sock has actually been washed or not. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that again. Um. <laughs> you know, when you use old socks, it's hard to tell. My, the bear that I made, the bear that I made is just an old sock. It's a very much a clean sock, but I've had it forever. So I thought it would be good to turn it into a bear. Oh, wonderful. Hello, Paul. Hello, Jamie. Glad you can be here today. Hi, Emma. Well, that's great news. Yeah, perfect um, to introduce to primary school students um, a micro bit. So I hope that you'll take something away from this webinar today and we'll definitely direct you to lots of really great resources that, that you can do with primary school um, age children. Absolutely. Hi, Karen. Hi, Stanley. Okay, it's three minutes past. I said I'd start at two minutes past. So I'm already running late. Um, but I think we'll get started. I can see your presenter view. Now it looks good. Thanks, Casey. Okay, so hello everybody and welcome to this home learning webinar series brought to you by uh, Katie, Mark and myself at the Microbit Educational Foundation. Uh, this is a third of six webinars in the home learning series. And um, we focus on really simple projects that you can do at home in this series. Um, we've brought you this series in particular so that we can help support families um, who are, are learning with their children at home. We, we want to support you as parents and carers um, so that you can work with your children to explore and discover how easy coding can be and, and is and, and how code makes the micro bit work. So we publish um, weekly um, a weekly newsletter, sorry, and, and weekly um, projects on microbit.org. The newsletter, it's very easy to subscribe to that newsletter and you'll receive um, an email from us uh, once a week with all the new ideas and projects that, that we're publishing that week. I'll show you where you can sign up to that newsletter at the end of today's webinar. So all of the activities that we go through in the home learning series, we use a programming language called Make Code. It's a block-based editor. It's really simple and it's, it's a great tool to get you started on your coding journey. So before we start our projects, um, we'll just introduce ourselves. So my name is Rachel. Um, I'm a parent to children um, that fall perfectly within the, uh, the age range that we, we try and reach at the foundation. Um, so I, I'm often trying to get encourage my children to learn how to code, although they don't always take me up on that offer. Uh, but 
I'm finding it stressful and a challenge to um, help support my children learn from home currently um, whilst, whilst trying to work myself. Um, I do find that videos um, really do help uh, me and my children. So I'm hoping that these webinars, you might get something from them or even share them with your children, but work through some projects together at home. Um, Katie? Hello, everybody. My name is Katie Henry, and I am a former classroom and STEAM teacher. I'm really excited to share with you a couple of projects today that you can do at home and introduce to you Mark, who at the foundation is our tech support engineer and today will serve as your chat master. So be sure to ask him all of your hard questions and curiosities. Uh, reach out to him directly in this chat. It's a great time to get your questions answered. And we'll also be looking for some input from you today on a special game we're going to play. So stay tuned for more information on that. Mark will be helping us pass your ideas off to us. <laughs> That's exciting. Um, okay, so I'll just talk through what the micro bit is. Um, we're going to do this at the start of every um, webinar in this series. So this is a micro bit if you've not seen one before. Um, very small, it's a pocket sized computer that can be programmed with instructions written in. It's really easy to give your micro bit some simple instructions. And that's what we're gonna show you today. So the features of the micro bit. So the micro bit has got two buttons on the front. You can see that on, on your screen there as well. You can program those buttons individually and you can also program them to, to work together as well. There's um, an LED grid, which contains 25 LEDs, and they're arranged five by five in a grid there. And you can pop some pictures on there, animations, text, um, numbers. And the LEDs also act as a light sensor, so you can the microbit can detect how much light is falling on it. Um, so, but there's, there's various projects on microbit.org where you can use them. We'll point them out to you later. Um, there's also an edge connector. It's um, capacitive touch. So when you touch this or connect something to it, uh, the microbit senses that. Um, and a, a really good thing to have um, for, a, for a lot of projects is some crocodile clips and alligator clips. Um, you, can, you can even connect a pair of headphones using the crocodile clip and, and listen to some um, melodies that you might want to pop on, on the microbit. So you can further expand the possibilities of the microbit by connecting things to this edge connector here. Uh, we have a radio chip. So that means that you can use a few microbits and you can send uh, stuff across to, so you can talk essentially um, to more than one microbit by, by using the radio. And there's also Bluetooth on there, so you can connect to, to tablets and, and, and things like that. Um, also the processor, on, on the back of the board. That's really the brain of the computer and that fetches, decodes and then carries out the instructions that you give it. We also have a compass on board and an accelerometer uh, and the accelerometer that detects the orientation of the board so that will detect which way the board is being tempted. And um, that's it in a nutshell. Katie, over to you. All right. So today we are going to be focusing on family fun. So we're going to use the microbit to create a dice, and then we're going to modify the at-home activity picker to play the game Truth or Dare. So if you're familiar with the game, you know that you, uh, it's a, it can be a more than a two-player game, three-player game. Rachel and I are going to play with each other, and we need you to suggest the Truth or Dare um, challenges for us today. So think of a child-friendly truth that you would want me or Rachel to share with the world or a child-friendly dare that you would want me or Rachel to try live in this webinar. Again, our foundation <laughs> does serve children ages 8 to 14, so please keep them child-friendly and we will use them here in just a few minutes. Finally, you are going to get a chance to meet two of the members of Rachel's family. Uh, on a little adventure when we play or go outside for Which Way Now. So very excited about these activities. And again, we wanna encourage everyone, please share out on social media the activities that you do from today's webinar. Uh, we have a really great example here from a heart project a couple weeks ago in the My Microbit episode. Please tag us at microbit underscore edu and we would love to share some of your projects in next week's webinar. So with that, I think we are ready to get started and make our dice. 
uh, again, be thinking about those truth or dare challenges because they're going to come up here pretty quick that we need them. <laughs> yeah, nothing crazy, please. Very simple. <laughs> I, indeed. Rachel, do you see uh, microbit.org? I do. Wonderful. Microbit.org is your one-stop shop for getting started with the microbit. And today we're going to get started here in the Let's Code tab. As Rachel mentioned, we're going to use the Make Code Editor. So I can get there just by clicking here. Now, when I create a new project, I'm prompted to name my project. So I'm going to give my project name here, Dice. And let's get started. So to create our dice, we, if you think about it, normally you go to play a game of Yahtzee or Monopoly or something and you're missing one of the dice. You only have one to shake or four out of the five there. So what can you do when you find that your dice is missing? You can shake your micro bit. So we're going to use this on shake input from the input toolbox here. And when we shake our micro bit, we want to show, just like on your dice, a random number. So we are going to pick a random number between one and six, just like you might have on a six sided die. Now, if you have a multi sided die, 20 sides or more, you could actually just change this and you could have more numbers. So again, picking that random number comes right from the math toolbox, right down here, pick random. And I pull this block out. And as you see me slide it into place here, you see those red dots that shows that it's going right into place if your sound is on, you can hear a little click and you know that everything is in place. So now over here in my simulator, when I shake the micro bit, I get a random number. So to transfer this code to my micro bit, it's as easy as coming down here to the download tab. And you might now notice these three new dots. That's because the new make code just launched last Friday. We're very excited about it. And you can pair your device right here now. So I'll select pair device got my micro bit plugged in with the USB cord right over here. And when I pair through web USB, now my make code screen is connected to my micro bit and the code is downloading. And when I shake, I now have my micro bit dice ready to roll. Okay. Now transitioning into our little game here, you might say, what's a fun game I can play tonight with my children at the dinner table or at the, if they're playing video games, you can knock on their door and try to engage them. Or maybe you want to go on a nice walk together. You could play this there too. You can think of truth as a number one, and you can think of dare as a number two. And you could play a game of truth or dare just by shaking the micro bit. So here I've got a two, which is a dare. Uh, <laughs> Rachel, I feel badly giving you a dare right off the bat here. Let me check in the chat and see, has anybody, Nobody suggested any. <laughs> I dare you people in the chat to give us a dare. <laughs> so, all right, I feel badly. I don't wanna, I don't wanna throw Rachel under the bus for the first dare. You can do, I'm fine. Don't, like, if you wanna dare me to do something, Katie, you go ahead. Okay, I dare you to uh, tap your head in, I don't know, rub your belly. Can you do those two things at once? <laughs> okay, all right, great. We're off to a good start. Let's roll again, it's my turn. Okay, so now, oh, we got a two again, actually. I got a dare. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay, stand up and spin around five times. <laughs> I have to see my pants. I'm glad I'm wearing regular, <laughs> regular pants. Three, four, and five. Everybody gets to see my cool micro bit shirt. <laughs> now I'm a little bit dizzy. Shake your head like a rock star. Okay, jump up and down on the spot. Do five star jumps. Wow, we got some <laughs> exercise focused people today. Love it. <laughs> All right, I'm shaking again. One, truth. So Rachel, i um, gonna give, okay. So, okay, um, I, any other, any truths? Pick your nose. Um, uh, okay. No. <laughs> Rachel, tell us. Tell us a, about a memorable project, a project you remember making um, when you were a child. Oh, when I was a child? That's quite tricky for me, Katie, because I, I, I don't really think I did a lot when I was a child. I really only discovered kind of making and got into it when I was in, I was sort of 
immersed in, into um, into the mic a bit well, to be honest with you. I mean, I do have fond memories of doing workshops for children uh, before um, I joined the mic a bit family. Um, wearable tech, so sewable um, thread and, and LEDs. I can't think of a project when I was younger. I used to spend a lot of time pretending I could skateboard, so like make little ramps and things like that. <laughs> yeah. I suppose that that's um, that's a fun fact, isn't it? No, I think that that absolutely works, and it just goes to show that at any age you can get involved in STEM, STEM education, and and make and create. Um, I often think about that research that says if girls don't get hooked by middle school, they're unlikely to get hooked by high school. And I just, I really question that sometimes because I come across so many women like, like Rachel and like myself who later in life developed a deep interest and we're growing our skills every day because it is so much fun. So oh, that's definitely. Exciting. Yeah, you can, you can get new skills at any, any time in your life, right? I learned how to knit this weekend, but that, that's absolutely amazing. I really enjoyed it. So yeah. Never well, Rachel, we're going to end on an uneven play. I'm going to keep this going here and show folks how they can make their micro bits say truth or dare instead of just using the number one or two. So if we have time at the end, you can stump me with one last truth or dare to keep it even. So in that instance, we were just shaking our micro bit to show a number one or two. But there is a way to create uh, your, your, some text on your micro bit. So I'm going to create a variable here called random number, and we're now going to use the random number to reveal truth or dare. So in order to do that, when I shake the micro bit, I want to set my random number, this variable, to actually pick a random number, one or two. And now, if a one comes up, Instead of just scrolling one across the screen, I want to show the word truth. So if the random number that comes across the screen is a one, let's show the string true, truth. And if it's not a one, it means it'll be a two. So simply I can just say else show false or it's not false, dare. <laughs> you could also use this as an exam answer giver. You could just have like random answers on your test. True, false, I don't know. Don't use this to take tests. It won't help you get a good score probably. Okay, so I roll it, truth, and I roll the dare. So if we were to play this game, uh, now I would know to give my opponent or give my friend a dare to play. And so this activity here, you can modify with other options as you'll see in the activity picture picker home learning activity and Rachel will show you where to find that at the end. So I hope that was fun for you. We're going to have some more fun and go on a little adventure with Rachel and her family. Rachel, what do you have for us? Well, Katie, whilst I was thinking of how I would present my activity picker um, project, I decided to convince my children to come on an adventure with me Secretly, I was just trying to get them outside for a bit of exercise. However, brought a bit of fun into it by introducing uh, the mic a bit too. Uh, so before I share what the code looks like for this activity, uh, I'm going to show you a video um, that we made at the weekend. So I'll just share my screen with the sound on. Here we go. So I'll just save it to my desktop. We're six days into our adventure now. Still no sight, sight of home. We don't know where we are, but we're relying on Microbit and our phone to get us back home. Erin, which way? Hopefully it doesn't go that way. Looks treacherous. Oh no, it's gone oh, that way. way! Let's go! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so, there we go. Um, we we'll use the Microbit to uh, to guide us through through the woods um, at the weekend it, it was it was great fun um, okay so I'm going to show you what the code looks like for the activity so if we head on over to microbit.org and click on let's code and select the make code editor the new project you can see I've 
practiced this a few times here. Um, new project, we're going to give it a name. Oops. Yay. Right, so I don't need these two blocks that always come, come up onto the programming space here. Um, so I'm just going to drag them and into the bin. So I'm going to use an input on shake. So I want to shake my micro bit to then, for it to then produce an image um, of an arrow directing me where I want to go. Um, and I also need to create a variable um, like Katie just did, there's no blocks here at the moment because when we create the variable, which in this case is going to be direction, I'm going to grab the set direction to block and just pop that. And I want it to pick a random. I want it to choose between three options. So I'm going to, I want it to show either north, east or west. So that's one. Obviously you can choose um, whatever you like. Next we're going to go back to the logic block. Grab this block here and just set it underneath our set direction to pop something in here. So we need a comparison. So I'm grabbing the comparison block and just hovering over this hexagon shape until it kind of, it gives me a visual um, when I can let go and sort of drop that into its place there. Okay, so if our direction, that's in the variable. So you see when I do this here, it's suggesting that I can pop that into the hexagon shape. So if I did that, it, it wouldn't really work. Um, I want it to show me where I can put it within the block. So that's there, just drag the whole thing back over. Okay, so if the direction is one, if it, if it picks a random number of one, I want it to show me an arrow. Now, you can create your own arrow here um, actually, if you scroll down to the bottom of this basic, you can see there's a show arrow block. If I pop the show arrow block there, it's already got north in there, but the drop down menu, lots of different options. We need to expand this block because there's only two options here and I need three. So if I click on this plus button, it allows me to put some more information here. So I'm going to grab the Oh no. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting, getting a little bit confused there. Um, I'm going to grab the comparison block again. The, the, you know, it gives it away being the same shape, really, doesn't it? <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to drop that in there and I'm going to go back and grab my direction block. We're not there. There. And if it's a two this time, two, not a 20. Come on, there we go. I'm going to just duplicate this block that we've previously used. Right click on there and press duplicate. That underneath. I'm going to change the direction to east this time. So now I've got we roll a one. If the direction is a one, it's going to show the north arrow. If it's a two, show the east arrow. And then if it's anything else, it can only be a three. I'm going to ask it to then show me west so i'm going to just pop that straight under there the west so now if we go over to our simulator and click on the shape uh, the circle here the white circle that's going to produce an arrow for me and that's randomly generated although it's like looking very much like it likes east at the moment but there we go no so we can download this onto our micro bit just plug in the USB cable and we click on these three little dots down here it says that it's already connected so I must have done this recently but you would click pair there normally um, and there would, would be a box that pops up here that Katie showed us 
you could select the mic a bit and press press OK and you, you would pair. And uh, I'm just going to download. So I'm going to download now onto my mic a bit. And uh, I think that's already on there. So if I shake, my program is now running on my mic a bit. Um, what I'm planning on doing next weekend, I don't know if, if you've seen, we're going to have the Home Secret Agent um, webinar coming up soon. Um, I've got some like netting that was on a bottle. I'm going to attach my mic a bit to this netting if it's, uh, if it's not cold, like a glove. And then we can, we can have the mic a bit on our, on our glove. I'm sure the kids will really want to get involved in that. Or just a, just a normal glove if it's, if it's a bit cooler outside. But there you go. That's my which way now um, <laughs> and added video. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, sorry, I was going to go straight into. The glove is way more important than where to find those activities. That is a great <laughs> glove. <laughs> um, so all of the activities um, are, let me just go back to, are found under the Learn at Home tab here. That's probably the quickest way to get to them at the moment. On there, uh, these are all of our our projects, and yeah, they're all they're all very super simple activities. You sh should be able to complete them in under fifteen minutes. These are the previous webinars uh, that we. Yeah, all the activities are here, so you can click on on these and there's some nice videos and even downloadable um, coding sheets there, as well, and. So yeah, there are all the resources, but if you click also on get started here, uh, user guide, there's some really nice animations in the features in depth. And so if you click on there, you can actually go through all the different features on the micro bit. And there's a, a video, um, an animation, sorry, to support um, the, the understanding really of those features. So it, it's good just to go through those sort of at your leisure. It, it, it explains what they are and you know what the purpose is and, and how they work really well. Um, so that's it. So just about wrapping up the webinar for today. Um, I will just quickly show you that from the Microbit um, website, from whatever page you're on, if you just scroll right down to the bottom, there's the sign up to our newsletter button here. There's also the sort of social marks there as well if you wanted to click through to any of those to, to contact us um, or follow us on, on Twitter. And, and Facebook. But if you click on the join us button, that'll take you to a, a short form. If you just fill, fill in that form and, and subscribe to the newsletter there, you'll receive um, all of the latest news and, and the projects uh, and news about the upcoming webinars um, into your inbox there. So it's a, a really good newsletter to sign up to um, if you're interested in that. And I think that's the end of today's webinar. Thank you everybody for joining us for family fun. Again, don't forget to share your projects on Twitter. We would love to show off some of them next week in yeah. the next episode. Thank you so yeah, much. For definitely. Thanks for joining everybody.